Bolia Julian Langale, half time, Malay, a maloi. He lay by an alimedia, yeah, to strive for him, Malay. Being a matter of fee, Tailo Finamalo. He looked over Tawa, yet wafoile, being on a tour. The Tomo family moya, the yan old of Tawa, I, Paima, Pumale, committee, Tatalinga, yeah, Sumoile. Tato suite tai, Manu Evolua, the Nandu Faltuia S. Tosso, Yava Penfoile Summer to Ina, Ya Ritual. Ya Vail Uleoe, Mulmole Toilian Lang or Fatal of Farmer Fatfiloa. Ya Ilene to Lale Fiafi. Ya more level Fatfilo in Ile, Fatal of Fale Summerly. Fafelanga, Tal of a Pasta, Malole. So if you are my lord for long, le ne, ne yaso. I love. I lenga tai fo ilia ia le, le faltua, le kapeta, my lord le. So if you are my lang emba, I don fo no fo alu. Hi. Lenga fo ilia ia, fatalo fo fo ile, fo ia le silasio le kalesia, sungal tai tai. Ia, me se fo ia le soatau, faltua, me se lenga to ina. Fatalo for yet to Otto Umalava, and Missy or Nayotato, my two or my two. Yeah, sing a cono on a vine I lua. Yes, a yo lava ile. By Lucio le Calesia, the Antalavo. Nanny for ya, Nefana Tina. Yeah, a man lolly for love. The little lava sound to bow was he. Asu mat mo fie mat fie fie ya ne asu viyel si fa fa man malo ya su kevis ya te fa pe atu ile ni tu la le fie fie talo fa talo fa lava ya ko ama yo tu sa fie fie ne asu sa fa no no ya pe sa itinga ina foi te au mangaluenga malava singa ne asu ya ya ta tu fa nau Sale Leila or Oma, is I fear fear little Loma, Pula, and I'm saying, Miss I fear. Yeah, for you are being a little too ah. Why, one of our young mamma. Duty fight, I took the other Yelia Sumaria, so I'll fool him of a year or a little for it too. The old tattoo fail, what ye man we are, yeah, tattoo for full being a little too. I only. If you fear if I saw a to the mountain, if I tattoo tavo, I may lay the mountain alley, tall alley, 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 potto solomona, or if at the otto lay a summa lima of a summa lima, or so more lay uting aina, or the young a year, a only lot of fear fear, or lay thousand mean I lay out no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Final <laughs> The Lord by my baby, level na yet at the shot to a little more than a party. Yell the tongue, ah, you never found my ear. It's a lambo day. Let you why you My is a fear of lot to fat. My ear is a fear for it. Yatia, see, I'm lighting eye. My ita ina maya, ilealla, 
de Sarabal, et même, il y a tant de ma foute en permanent toi, il y a ce homme, mais il y a ce homme. Si il y a autre Sarabal, il y a autre ton, il y a Léona, ou pas la voix, tout le temps, tout le temps, mais il y a un falon, 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 il Ilo walau faham la wang ala lay mukhair no matu tu itu sila fai. Ilo ngala matu sum, mai sila ngala matu bafteng ala lay fiaf. Matu fafte ya wasak yang lay ia le ayn kali sia matiu te mafi al mengadu nga. Yang lay le fanau ma ukong. Mani si fui nai le malu matu fale tiu te fui tonu ayn fafte te le ilo walau. Lewa matu tu yo mai fatasi matu te. Waktu rumah lawa fio ya lalu matu maftang ada ni fias, amat aini lalu matu, amaftang ada talu matu tersia ni yang suasan melengang apa iya, setai mi matu su su es setai mi matu fai tau lawa fio, matu mana umia yang ngang ngai tai tai matu, ina iya matu mana malama, pesialo fina ngalo mau matu ada ni fias, taman wia lalu matu maftang, taman wia fo ini si wadem fai on lawa mai. Taman wia ile au ofiso lo fengai ma taita iyo matu por kalaminei. I ia o ia suo no lo sua fo matu wode mba lao toi nei. Amen. So thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys are well. So uh, today we're actually looking at um, the study of the law. So we've got this study, uh, one on Friday and two on Sabbath. So just pray that God will continue to uh, bless and uh, guide us. No worries, also. Thank you for letting us know. So <laughs> here's one of the um, really good studies for tonight. And when we look at the law, it's probably one of the most uh, important blessings that God has given to us because he's given us instructions that we can follow. Here's the one. We've got um, sections here. Uh, the first one is we are, we are saved apart from the law or we are saved not from the law and the first uh, verse that comes to our study this evening is ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. let's let's uh, look at this verse <laughs> so ephesians so ephesians chapter 2 uh 8 to 10. um can someone read that for us please awesome thank you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. I mean that you have been saved by grace because you believe you did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. You cannot boast that you are saved by the work you have you have done. God has made us what we are in Christ Jesus. God made us new people so that we would do good works. God had planned in advance those good works for us. He had planned for us to live our lives through them. We are saved by an act of grace, good works, contribute nothing, nothing to what Jesus did for us. We are not saved by good works, but we have been saved for good works. Okay, so give us um, your kind of um, understanding. Obviously, the, the, the answer is there, but how can we kind of explain it in our own words? Um, I personally think this... This um verse um in eight says that we've been saved by God's grace and we did not save ourselves, so we shouldn't boast we shouldn't boast and um put ourselves higher than God because God um saved us and said that um this is another way we could keep his commands by also giving him thanks for saving us. 
and yeah. Well done. So we have right in our hands the Bible, and in the Bible it has also the Ten Commandments. Um, but it says here specifically that the the law does not really save us. But what really saves us? An act of grace. Right. Okay. Well done. So when we when we say an act of grace, this means that God loves us unconditionally. And what that means is that before we were even born or before we even existed, God loved us with his grace. And grace actually means grace receives, accepts, and cleanses every single person. That's what it means. And so the, maybe the question for us now, then, if we've kind of understood now that it is by grace we have been saved. So what's the point of the law? Okay, so let's have a look. So thank you so much. So God's law is perfect. Let's have a look at this. Uh, Psalms 19 verse 7. Can someone read that? Thank you. Yep. Yeah, um, so what it says is that um, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. And decree the decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. So what I think this is talking about is that Law is very simple, and it can change, can change um, the soul of people, how the way they live, the way they think, and um, and their influence. So yeah, that, that's what I think this verse means, and what I also think it means is that it is. The commandments that God has given us are righteous and trustworthy. So there's so there's nothing to worry about. Well done. There's another word that um, it's in the study for tonight. It says here that God's law is what? Perfect. So if it's perfect, that means that what? It can't be changed because it's really perfect. And I like the way that you said it. it's The law is quite simple and it's not complicated because we are the ones that make it complicated and all we have to do is to obey god's law because god wants us to follow him and follow his instructions so one thing that we know that god's law is perfect and it can't be improved by anything else let's look at another verse here romans 7 verse 12 and someone's found that you can read that up for us. Romans 7 verse 12. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. Awesome. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. And so it says here, the Ten Commandments <clears throat> not only is perfect, but also it is holy and it's righteous. Okay, so now we've kind of discovered that the commandments that God has given to us, it can't be changed, it can't be altered. It is perfect and holy and it's righteous. Let's look at one more verse, which is in the same book. It's in Romans 3, verse 20. Because no one can be made right with God by following the law. The law only shows us our sin. Wow. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. <clears throat> So this is interesting now. <clears throat> so therefore, no one will be what declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the what of the law. Okay. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. So, in a nutshell, what does that mean to us? What is it saying in regards for us? Basically, saying that um, without the law, we wouldn't know what sin is. Well, Absolutely. Mm. It's like if we do something wrong, for example, if you murder someone, um, you think back to the law, the commandments say do not kill. Um, and that shows us our sin. And you well done. So I want you to think about this. 
God gave the law to Moses. Now, if we look at the time frame, uh, it's about maybe three, maybe 3,000 years, maybe even longer than that. So those laws that you just mentioned, thou shalt not kill, still stands today. Can you believe that? <clears throat> What's the other law um, that we know of? Some of the ones. Not steal. Thou shalt not steal. So it's a law that still remains to this very day. <laughs> so the pillars of society, of government, still hold to these laws here. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, you know, because that's against, you know, the law of God. And no one can actually change that. Maybe some governments have actually changed it because of man-made rules. But we know that these laws that God has given to us still applies to us today. That's incredible. Who would have thought that? And so uh, I love how you said Jabez said, we wouldn't know what sin is if the law didn't exist. And so this was such an important part. When Moses got the law, the people continuously sinned. And then when they saw the law, they, re they, re they realized, wow, we didn't even know we were doing this. <laughs> and then they realized, okay, let's be obedient to God. Let's be obedient to the laws. But remember that the Lord doesn't want, doesn't save us. It is an act of grace, which is God's unconditional favor, which means God loves us. And I'm going to be very careful. God loves us regardless of what we do. And when I say that, I say it in a way that we have to be very mindful what we do because, you know, God doesn't like sin. And that's uh, important for us to not take advantage of that grace. Awesome. Any questions, any thoughts? Anything that kind of stands out for you? Hey, Pastor, I'll just jump in there. Uh, if that's okay. Absolutely. Also. Mm. Mm. Well, as the grace of God, now only only allowed to feel for little Um, only uh, and the grace of God. Um, that's it. Christian the law is not valid anymore, and it's through uh, the grace of God or the Malu Yesu. Mm. Uh, now the topic which is um one of um uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. of God. So, uh, uh, come up uh, because of this topic, the grace of God and the two life form of the law. Thank you, Sonho. You brought up a very good point, which actually we move into the next section, which is very important for us to go through because, as uh, Afa said, um, a lot of people misinterpret the Bible. 
in regards to whether the law still applies. So let's have a look. Uh, it says here in the next section here, was the law done away with? Okay, let's have a look. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 19. Jesus never intended to do away with the law. Heaven and earth would vanish first. Do not think that I have not uh, I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Mm. Surely I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. That's a very, very straightforward text. Thank you for reading that. <coughs> it tells us specifically that Jesus never intended to do away with the law. Heaven and earth would vanish first okay <laughs> so like i've said we have to be very very careful how we interpret what the bible says but here is a clear passage where jesus actually says that i did not come here to what, abolish the law but what did he come to do to fulfill them fulfill it okay and one of the reasons why he actually said this is because a lot of people misuse the law they use it for their own advantage. And so this is one of the most important parts about the law still remains. <clears throat> and the reason why it still remains is because he says heaven, um, he says here, heaven and earth would vanish what? First. <laughs> Which is very, very interesting. <clears throat> because God's law, what he says it stands. Remember, when Jesus speaks, things exist. The heavens and the earth exist, okay? And so when he says in regard to um, destroying the earth because of sin, that could happen instantly. Hmm. Well, let's look at another verse here. Uh, Romans 3, verse 31. Romans 3, <laughs> 31. Well, then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. So there you go. <clears throat> that answers the question very, very well. It is hard to find a clearer verse on a Christian's responsibility to the law. We, what? we uphold the law. And so it's very important for us to uphold God's law. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, what happens if we actually run a red light? <laughs> we either see a flashing camera uh, or the police will stop us. <clears throat> and so we actually have to uphold the law of the land. Okay. Yes, we may probably get away with uh, one red light or two red lights and no one sees us. But who actually sees us? <laughs> God sees everything mm. and so we as Christians we have a higher standard of responsibility and that responsibility is to uphold God's law here's another verse here and still in Romans so Romans chapter 6 14 and 16 For all yeah. sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Mm. And shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, with, uh, which leads to righteousness? Okay, this one here is a bit of a an interesting passage here, but I want us to look at the statement. <laughs> the statement says, God has what removed the condemnation of the law through the death of his son, Jesus Christ. And he says here, we no longer live in slavery to sin, but as slaves to righteousness, which means that we serve God now. And so we've kind of looked at 
the law doesn't really save us. And the law doesn't really condemn us anymore. And why is that? Because Jesus died for us. As we mentioned in the last couple of verses, that Jesus came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to abolish the law. <laughs> and so he came with the correct interpretation, but also he came to practice what it means. Now, um, let me ask you a question. Um, did Jesus ever break any of the laws? No. No. It's pretty easy to, to, to understand. He didn't break any of the laws at all. In fact, he actually gave the law, okay? So which means he is even greater than the law. And so Jesus comes to fulfill the law, and also Jesus was uh, perfect obedience to the law. And the reason why he was, it was, he was perfect is because his own sacrifice was on the cross. And so he was obedient to even death on the cross. Any questions before we continue, before we move on? Just want to probably just pause there so we can kind of digest what these verses are talking about. But if anyone else has any thoughts. <laughs> um, I don't have a question, Pastor, but um, just thinking back to the verses we've been reading and what yep. we've been discussing. Um, it seems like the law or like the way that we upkeep that we keep the law that is sort of um our test it's a testament of our faith. Mm -hmm. So if we say that we have faith in God and that we believe in Jesus, but we don't keep the law, then our faith or our word is useless because like Romans 3:31 says that you awesome. can't um so it's like the law is sort of keeping us accountable for our faith. Um, because you can't say um yep. So yeah, that for me is um the Lord doesn't save us, but it definitely keeps us accountable. And it's um it can show people, especially people who are not Christians, um that yes, we really do believe this, because I think sometimes as Christians, we get um, judged or people say, oh, well, why do you say you're a Christian, but, you know, you say these things or you're not a good person? Yeah. Um, and I think us keeping the law, that is a testament. That's our testimony that we are saved. And that is the thing that people see before we even say um, or, like, introduce ourselves. So, yeah. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Really, really appreciate that. Any other thoughts? Any other comments? Um, yep. I'm just going off what Kim was saying. Um, yeah. I was just reading the verse. I was actually like going through the bottom of it. And in Romans 6, verse 21, it says, What benefit did you reap? at that time from the things you are now ashamed of um and it uh those things result in death um it just goes back to what kim was saying that even though like we know the law we know what is right what is wrong i mean yeah what is wrong we just tend to we tend to choose what we want um yeah I lost the other verse that I was going to relate it to. It's okay. No, I like the verse that you just mentioned in regards to um, what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of. Those things result in death. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like us humans, like we tend to enjoy um, the stuff that we we like to do. We tend to like to go out and like party and be of like what's trending like do the stuff that are trending now but those things as said before those things stay with like the earth um those are earthly things it it leads to death it doesn't like give you eternal life um 
the goal that we're um aiming for. Yeah. Well done. No, fantastic. I think as mentioned before, um the purpose of the law also is to what <coughs> is to show us our our sinful nature. So it's to remind us uh, the our conscience to be conscious of what what we do and also is to help us um to make sure that we be obedient to God's instructions and God's promises and so we don't miss out on those blessings that he gives to us. Okay, we'll continue. Thank you so much for sharing. So uh let's look at also uh first Corinthians chapter seven verse nineteen. So the apostle Paul makes a distinction between uh, ceremonial law and the commandments of God and God's command is what counts. Okay, so first uh, Corinthians I should um, whoever finds it first they, if they can read it out that would be awesome. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Keeping God's command is what counts. Okay. Let's kind of just pause there. What is that saying and what is circumcision? Okay. So uh, the verse actually says here in Romans chapter 7 verse 19, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Okay. So basically, this was a practice that uh, the Jews um, did, and that basically was a sign of them being um, set apart as God's people. And so if you weren't uh, circumcised, which means that you weren't part of God's people. And so... That what that was a practice that was done. But then it says here, circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. So it doesn't really matter whether you're what circumcised or you're not circumcised. But keeping God's commands is what counts. That's really important to understand. And so, when we actually look at um, in regards to how. Uh, we are saved. We are saved by God's what? God's grace. We're not saved by anything else in regards to the law, but the law helps us to understand what God's purpose is for us. Any any thoughts on this? Um, on this verse. Okay. Um, maybe I can get uh, yeah, the boys, Brian. If you guys can um, do number nine for us, please. And uh, this means that God's holy people must do a persecution patiently, obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, do you want to read? Um, was that the Revelation 14, 12? Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. can you just read the statement? Um. It says that the last test over the mark of the beast will not overcome those who keeps God's commandments and remains faithful to Jesus. So basically what is saying is that when the spirit of the Antichrist um, comes in a physical form, um, he will um, he will tell those to um, tell the people stuff like food and like other needs that people need to survive with is that um they would need to have a mark but those who remain faithful to god and um and keep his commandments and remain faithful to their belief to um the beliefs we hold that jesus is real and he is coming to um judge the world they will not be overcome by this temptation as the commandments, even even though there are things that may fear 
because we are human, like persecution, um, God said the temptation will not be, he will not make the temptation um, as nothing. Yeah, you can't take. So, so yeah, that's what it, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So one one thing that we know for sure is scores uh, for one patience. The other thing is endurance. Um, and also it says here, um, those who are, remain faithful and keep God's commandments. So there's a couple of key words that tells us that if we remain patient, if we remain um, faithful, if we have endurance. And when we uh, follow God's commandments, these are the faithful people that God is looking for. And this is such a blessing for us to know this because a lot of people, um, they pretty much miss some of the key things for us to do. And that is making sure that we have patience and endurance and that we follow God's commandments. And that we will remain faithful to the very end. And God will reward us. And that reward is a crown in heaven. And I, I, I look forward to that day when Jesus comes again. That we will remain um, faithful to him to the very end. Awesome. Well done. Um, anybody would like to do number 10? Sorry, I just want to add on to number 9 before we move on. Go for it, yeah. I think another <clears throat> another important thing that we need to keep in mind is consistency. Awesome. Only because we can't we can't just turn to God for one day and then, mm. and then think that oh okay I have eternal life my name's on the books for eternal okay. life. Um, I feel like you need to be consistent and patient in your walk with God and in your journey. Um. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of temptations, especially now, um, especially when the world is like corrupt. As I would say the world, uh, the word is, it's like there's problems from left, right, and center. Mm. You know, it just takes self discipline, um, consistency, and patience in order for you to like separate yourself from the um, worldly temptations and stuff. Mm. Well done, fantastic. That's a that, that's a great um. Um, encouraging for us there to have consistency, which is pretty much the same thing as um, perseverance. Just keep, keep, keep going. Mm, keep going, consistent in our walk with God. Awesome. Okay. Anybody like to do number ten? <laughs> um. Yep. Awesome. So Hebrews eight verse ten reads: In the future, I'll make this agreement with the people of Israel, says the Lord. I'll put my teachings in their mind and I will write them on their hearts. I'll be their God and they will be my people. Mm. Um, on the book, under the new covenant, the law is to be written on our hearts. Well um, done. Yeah, so what I got from this is that um. The, the law should be written in our hearts, meaning we should always remember the law, um, keep it in mind everywhere we go. Um, whatever sin we do, whatever we, um, uh, whatever we do, um, make sure we remember the law um, because it can also help us when we sin. Um, we'll know, we'll remember the law, oh, we're not allowed to do this, and then we'll change. Yeah. Well done. Now, you brought up a good point is that I will put my laws in their minds and write them in our way, in our hearts. Now, imagine when the end of days come, um, people will actually take away our Bibles. Okay. And so we have to try and remember the, the law of God. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a, um, a movie back in the, yeah, a while back, but it was the, the it was called Eli, 
uh, it was starring Denzel Washington. Um, and basically what they were trying to do, they were trying to kill Denzel Washington because he had the Bible. And, uh, and the reason why they were trying to kill him is because the Bible had knowledge and it had the truth. And people were trying to kill him and so forth. But it was very, very, uh, what we see today is that a lot of people, um, when they have the word of God, they have the truth and they have knowledge, but also they have wisdom. And that's one of the things at the end times that we have to remember that we, we have the word of God <clears throat> in our hearts. And also we have the word of God in our minds as well. So well done. Okay, who would like to do number 11? I'll do it. Thank you. Hmm. Um. So number 11 is First John 2, verse 3 to 4. Mm-hmm. And it says, And we can be sure that we know if we obey his commandments. If someone claims I know God but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is mm-hmm. not living in the truth. So it just... It's sort of what I was saying before that um, you can't claim that you have faith in God and that you love God if you don't follow his commandments um, because your greatest testament are your actions. You know, like they say, your actions speak louder than words. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you say, like, your words are void and useless. So um, we really need to follow God's commandments because it says here that we are liars if we don't and we're not living in the truth. Awesome. Well done. Can appreciate that. We, we see that it's so important that we kind of um, be followers of Jesus and also Practice what he says. And this is a really good statement. It says here, anyone living in defiance to God's command does not truly know God. And so it, it's so important that we continue to trust in God and also to ask him to help us with the challenges that we go through in life because every single person living in this world or has lived in this world always fall short of the glory of God because there's a a standard and the standards always go up and down. But God's principle doesn't change. And that principle also tells us that his grace is sufficient for us and he loves us unconditionally. So thank you for that. Um, So the last one is 12. Who would like to finish this one off? Great. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not so burdensome. So so what it says here is that the the greatest expression of love we can show God is through obedience. So obeying God is the most important thing you can do. And that God has given us commandments to obey. And just like um just like Pastor Panapa said, that the commandments are not are simple. We just make it really hard to follow because there's many like temptations and things that um get in the way of of obeying these commands. Like our feelings, um Things that we do, things that we say can affect our way and our um, definition of obedience. So, yeah, that's what I learned. Well done. You've you've touched on a good point. I mean, what is our definition of obedience? (laughs) So when we look at the word obedience, um, we look at also from the perspective of when Jesus came to the earth as a child, he was obedient to his mum and dad, you know, his earthly parents. And also he was obedient to his heavenly father. Mm. 
And so if Jesus can actually do this, which means he was human, just like us, we can do it as well. And as as uh, you know, you've mentioned that sometimes we also make it complicated ourselves. And in the end, we kind of, yeah, we suffer the consequences for being the opposite, disobedient as well. So as we kind of close our study for today, I want us to um, remind each other that we are saved not from the law, but we are saved from God's grace. Praise God for that. <clears throat> so we are saved through his grace. And remembering as well that God's law is perfect. No one can actually change God's law. And the third section talks about as well that um, was the law done away with? The answer is no. It was not done away with. But God came. Jesus came to this earth to fulfill it. And when he fulfilled it, he fulfilled it even to the point of being obedient to death. And that is um, the amazing gift that God has given to us. He's given his son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill the law and that we can actually um, live for him and we can give our lives to him knowing that this life that we have is a gift from God. Any thoughts before we close? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much for contributing to our study tonight. I hope that um, the studies have been a blessing, but also uh, kind of helps us to understand more and more about the different things that God is telling us in the Bible uh, and also having the right interpretation of what the Bible says on, on these topics as well. So thank you so much. May God bless you. And we'll uh, head back to the main room. Yeah. Mulia <laughs> Tantalunga <laughs> Lilo to Tonu Lago Finangalo Tangataya, Yatato to Atu Fatasi, Tofinangalo, Mano Leloto, Yala Tato Fianai Matal Sanga, Luane Tato Sui, Yona, Famae Amele, El Tato Tina Fanganga, Tato Fianai Matal Sanga. The two Aloma to Tumapa Yai, Pafonga Taloi, Oyo let us see the letu Alo. He never to allow Matu Fatas, Matu Aine Kalisia Pion Masania. Molly to Elo Matu and Angle Fatmanu, Malfani Tanga of you. Fafta Tere Lavot Malayasu, Sa Fernailo, the Alma Tute Payon Masania. A Nata Lea, Fanaoya Onga. I may say Nayo Matu Matua Matua, and I find a witch in Malola to fan. They will mow to a mow name of Tanga Mafana Malo in a Calisia Matu to Molia to a Langang or Fabalu, Malfani Tanga I love a few. Faftai Terry Lava Tama, Faftai Fulum Ta Opusa Matu Faso in a little of Yaf, Alalo to La Fon, Awa Ola to La Fono Ole, Failonga Lewa to Inna Maya Matu Matu Te, Fapelna Matu Savalia to Nuelo of Fio, Faftai Terry Lava, Faftai Mome Uma Letua, Leola Malmalus. I must say for you, my two lawa in a calisia, be on a fair life for in a yasso, duty five of be on massania. There are matu far for a pair for malumal for Nitanga yatioi. A silafia let two of matu, mana onga let two of matu tama, 
pato tu ina tu peo na ufsia lo mato aina kalesia mato talo fa pitoa fo lau o talo vau le tua peo na ngo ni va yaso ni wi ke ni mato yai le tua ya fa peo na fa mia lau o talo vau le tua fa mia i fo fa nga fa ta tia lo talo vau ya mai sele pai postali lau fe ngai tu ai lo o talo vau ni wi ke ya fa pe na ni yai ni nga nga stele Tahu lomba lo le tua lomba tu tu ma, paman dia le tak tak tahu atau lo wow, amai sela tu suik komit, ya fa pel lo fa foin lo pokalam, ya ya pelang ane lo fio le tua lomba tu, ma paman dia foi lo wai le kalisia, pelang ulang le tua, wai silafia, tu ma le soi fuang aman le, wai time lo lo atau lo wow, le wai time le tua wa pel na, eh ni si lomba tu atau lo ni si atau lo wow le tua. Waktu foi saya meninggal itu apa yang saya lakukan? Bahasa mula mula ia faham penal, faham dia ilatau itu. Dengan dia wafu fanga fata dia tondo loi kalisia, faham dia wafu fanga tema ia faham penal, fata nuwi nama mula ia mula walofa itu alamatu. Bahasa itu total. Ia faham dia lalu awal faham dia awi apa sahaja pada faham dia itu amanu fal. Ia wafu alamatu maftang tondo loi kalisia masih foi lagi itu win. Ya ngalai lo fio ya cai la ua le tua, ya koi la ua le tua tema, ya wafo i duty five ton lo so matu e kalesia, ya fa manu ya cai le la ua le tua, fa manu ya fo lo matu a inga kalesia, sunga tai tak ya masi le loa loa le kalesia, wai si la fia ya, fa nau nau mo 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 nga lava lo matu a inga kalesia, matu te fia fa manu ya la wo fio le tua lo matu tema, matu te talo fa pitua fo e le tua la fia fi tema, oh no. Nisi fo el mato ai ngai kala si o mato le toe vai. Ia ta tonu lava alo iai toe la nga ngalo fio ia i lato. Fa amol moli musu ina o lato loto. Ngalo ia mato na mato toe mafut. Fa fo i pervi i ngai ia i lato le toe. Mato te talo. Wa fo fo nga fa ta tia lo e kala si a ne tau sanga. Ia fa penao na ulu misao. Ai lo fio le toe ia fa penao na. Malu ia fo fo nga mato ti faya le tua lo mato. Apa ke talo fo, lo sa apatyo lo mul mul mai, ni si fo ila, fe ngay matiw tin mo. Ay mai si fo li la ngul fe ao, ya yay la nga le lo fio le tua. Fa mul ia lo mato le po, stay mi ala mato mwem, lo fa, ba lo lo, ya mato ala fa ita fo lo malu ia. Fa fo i pen di inga ya ti oi, fa mangalo ni mato se, fa mangalo ni mato le ao. Lo la vas fa fa yesu mato wo le vala tua ni. Amen, amen. Mato ke i apela o fio. Ole vi inga lava e foi atu i ante oi. Ni lau tu singa ma lau kiku inga i ante i mato lau fanau. Fafta ili neva noa i fai fuio no mato fi fa soa i. I lau a fion a fa ftei lau tu spaia. Fa tonu e fa poto e fa i masulu i a mātu wala. I a e fa manatu i a ti mātu au le so i fuanga ma le olanga o lau mātu wula ai ma le mātu saulik. Fa ftei i lau a fion a e a oa o mai a ti mātu i te miuma. E a wala tonu i te tau o nau mātu saulia. E ta ita māo i mātou o se whānau o tūmu i se se mā a sala. Ma mātou o langa o tau ma whai. E le i se mea mātou te ma whai a pe āne au noa lo whā a se mai. Na mātou te tālo i lau o fio whā a moe moe. Ia, mā whuta i āte i mātou. O e whā whonga i mātou o nga o tu i nātou. Mātou te te tālo i lau o fio whā a moe moe. Se tai mi o se aso wa e whinga ngā loi. Ia whai a lawa no whinga ngā. E nei a whiafi o mātou manatua na i o mātou a inga. Te leo aso ma tai mi mātou te leo mafutai. Fa nau nonga o mātou na i o mātou mafuta whatasi. Na i o mātou whataua lo walo whai. Por calambe ma fofua ngal matu ngal beka. Ma e fafufu nga yaita ma. Ma tu talo ila u fio yaya yaya ufa manu yanga. Yaya ngal leifata unu wina. 
na yo matu fa na u matu ba yale tele of afita uli ma fa la vela vela ne tai mi tof tof o ina ma to ma wa ama ma to no ma tu fa mo mo ya olo e ma wina no na tu so fu ma lo ma tu ol ma tu ta lo ya che o ya fa ma ni yanga ya e so so ani ma e fa ma ni ya ti la na yo ma tu ma tu a o si si na ma tu ma ma tu ta lo ya che o e lo fa ni lo na tu so fu ya ma lo pui pui a pe la to a pe si a pe fa ma che lo Abelna vele nei vei tei talo ya te oe fa mole mole ago fangia ila to ma tu lenga le to male nei fia fi fa fi mai tele la de fa manu yanga yo ma tu pai nga tu tu tas ter tonu wa fa mali ina ila to we ala yo ma futa mai nei tu fa le tino ya sili de fa le la ya fo i pe ale vi ina ya te oe Famangalo matu se famul moli lo na esila fida o matu wai vainga ya lenga tai leo lo matu le famaoni la ngalbe matu stalo ila ufio famul moli famangalo matu e famanu ya ila kuna fai fi au futu amle no falo ya 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 famanu ya ngai la ufio ya wale o foi na tolo la so fu a to tu ai la malu e ma vole malo si tino ya facile si le le ma ana le le la le so na ma tu te ta pour tu o mala ai la to u ma e ta ta ia la un ai we ma tu ta lu la u fio ya ma ya pele malos ya ma tu so fu a o na e te mo e Fafitai tamai lo tali o matu mi fonga le nea fiafi. Fafitai lo fa maa lunga ya te matu. Ono lo suafa ye sua la tuwe lo matu kitalo. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for the privilege that we have to come together this evening, Lord, to study your word. Lord, we give you thanks for our teens who have been able to come on, our juniors, Lord, our youth, and especially our parents, Lord, and our church family, Lord. Thank you that we've taken time out of this busy week, Lord, to spend with you so that we can study and be encouraged together. Lord, we want to thank you for our church family, Lord. You know what is in our hearts even before we've requested or asked you, Lord, and we pray and put these things especially forward lord we think of our young people lord we know that um it's great to see them active in the church lord but we know it's not easy for them and lord we just pray that as a church we can support them most importantly lord that they feel a need to come and learn about you lord and we just pray especially as they look forward to their camp lord we pray that this camp may be a time of renewal for them a time where they can be encouraged lord to work together lord because lord this year has gone by fast tomorrow is the last day of august we look forward to september lord but we look back and we think of all the blessings that you've given that you've protected and guided each and every one of your church family lord and during this time we've noticed that there are some church families who we haven't seen in a while lord help us to visit them help us to encourage them and help them to know lord that we have been praying for them and that we love them and want them to come back lord we also think, Lord, of our family members who are in hospital. We know some have had surgery over this week, Lord. We pray that you can um, guide them, that you can protect them, and we pray for healing, Lord. We pray that as they make the road to recovery, Lord, we thank you for the family who's been there to support them, Lord, and I just pray you continue to be with them. Lord, we think of all the departments in our church. They all play an important role, Lord, but if we don't work together, Lord, we can't Finish your work, Lord, and we pray that as we work together to support one another, Lord, we pray that you continue to give us good counsel, good wisdom, Lord, and we know that your work is and your soon return is near, Lord. We pray that as we finish this week, we look forward to a Friday night, Lord, where we can come together as well as your Sabbath, Lord. We pray for the visitors that will be attending as well as um, our young people, Lord, especially, we pray that you can be close to them and just remind them of how much you care for them and how much you love them, Lord. We pray, Lord, as 
we rest this evening, Lord. I pray that you can send your angels to guard our uh, to guard our homes and our families, Lord. We know that there's been a storm, and we know that somewhere around Australia or New South Wales has been affected, Lord. And we pray for those families who have been affected, Lord. We pray that you can be close to them. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to serve you, Lord. And pray that we can do it wholeheartedly and that we can do it to the best of our ability because you're always there to help us and guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.